Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Diamond Detective Agency, handy hints on homicide. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Just pick a victim. All right. Got it? Yes. Six of spades. Oh. <laughs> Hello, Helen. Hi. Am I going to see you tonight, Rick? Uh, depends on how many lights you leave on in the study. But are you coming over? Wouldn't miss it. I've been puckered up since 8 o'clock this morning. <laughs> Francis has the night off. I'll have dinner for you in by the fire. Well, take it easy. The last time you built a fire, it got so hot I had to keep basting myself for a week. Oh. Sure. The next day I walked by Linda's and some guy grabbed me and shoved an apple in my mouth. <laughs> Said he'd get fired if I didn't climb back in the window and lie down. Oh, I'll see you tonight. Bye. Bye. Now, let's see. Where did I put the soap? Mr. Diamond? Oh, it depends on what you want him for. If it's the rent, he's being buried over in Jersey this afternoon. My name is Dr. Edward Gerson from Bellevue Hospital. I have nothing to do with the rent. Well, if you're with the Sanity Commission, Diamond's still in Jersey. It is apparent that you are behind in your rent and you wish to remain buried in Jersey for the moment. Well, it's not as bad as it sounds. Are you a potential client? I'm a psychiatrist, Mr. Oh. Uh... Well, pick a good one. How about Applenocker? All right. I'm in a rather peculiar position, Mr. Applenocker. Oh, I don't know. I always sit like that. <laughs> for the past four days, I've been treating a young man for an unusual type of shock. What did he do? Run his electric train in the bathtub? <laughs> You're quite an interesting case yourself. Are you always so unconcerned when someone comes to you with a problem? Look, doctor, everybody's got a problem. That's why I'm in business. If you've got a big one, you'll get by uh, my little remarks, and I'll be glad to see what I can do for you. Quite a philosophy. All right, then. Let's both get down to business, Mr... Apple knocker. Oh, now, uh, what's your trouble? This boy I mentioned, he disappeared five days ago. Hmm? You said you'd been treating him for four days. He couldn't have been gone very long. A day and a night. Hmm. He was found the next morning wandering through the Bowery. Unable to speak, unable to understand anything. I see. Someone took him to Bellevue. Luckily, the family's private physician is also on the staff at Bellevue. He saw the boy and called the family immediately. And you've been treating him ever since? Yes. Last night, the boy began to talk, make reasonable sense... Now, this would continue for perhaps a few hours, then he would lapse into a complete state of confusion. Each time he was given a sedative, and each time, as the sedative wore off, he talked for a while, knew who he was, start to tell about the missing night, and then lapse once more into this state of, well, confusion. Hmm. And you think something happened during this missing night, and he doesn't want to remember it. Correct. Did you ever study psychology? Uh, every day, Doctor. I get enough screwy cases in here to make your clientele look like a bunch of Einsteins. And now stop unlocking my mind. There's a draft. <laughs> well, as you said, this boy won't let himself remember something that happened on that missing night. He'll talk about everything up to that point, but the minute he reaches it... Yeah, he jumps the tracks. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, what do you want me to do? You uh, know what I want you to do, Mr. Diamond. Okay, okay. Now, here's one that will throw you. You know what I want you to do? <laughs> the boy's family is quite willing to meet any expense that you feel is necessary. Oh, remind me not to take you on a double date. <laughs> if I don't discover what happened to this boy on the night in question, I'm afraid he might lose his mind permanently. These periods of confusion are becoming more frequent, and sooner or later, he won't be able to distinguish between the real and the unreal. I'm going to put him under narcosynthesis this evening, and I'd like you to be present. All right, Doctor. What's the boy's name? William Carter. Be at Bellevue at 8 o'clock and ask for me. The boy's family will be there also, and you can tell them about your fee. Now, uh, just give me a quick answer and leave my motives alone. Is his family wealthy? Quite. And I'll see you at 8 o'clock, Dr. Gerson. You uh, would have anyway. Goodbye, Mr. Applenocker. You know, you can feel pretty silly when a guy like that walks in and answers all your questions before you got time to think them up. Anyway, I remembered my dinner date with Helen and put in a fast call to the little redhead. She was unhappy, naturally, but she said something about me holding the pucker and to drop around whenever I had the time. At 8 o'clock, I was standing in the long hall at the Bellevue Hospital. Dr. Murray, report to the second floor desk, please. Dr. Murray, to the second floor desk. Good evening, Mr. Diamond. Oh, uh, hello, Dr. Gerson. What's the matter? Dr. You're looking Hacker, a little nervous. Please, the hospitals the bother me. That's very Dr. interesting. Hacker, please, the family the is at the end of the hall. Let's go down. Uh, tell me, Doctor, just what exactly happens when you 
put William Carter under this narcosynthesis. It's an intravenous injection. It unlocks those little doors in the back of his mind. Gets him to talk. You'll see. It's really very amazing. Uh, right here. Good evening, Doctor. Mrs. Carter. How's the boy? Uh, not much change. This is Mr. Diamond, Mr. and Mrs. Carter. How do you How do? How do you do? How do you do? Uh, Mrs. Carter, uh, Dr. Gerson wants me to find out what happened to your son the night he was missing. Have you any idea? He said he had a date. And when I asked him who it was, he wouldn't tell me. That's all we know. I think William will be able to recreate what happened for you, Mr. Diamond. Now I'll leave you to discuss uh, business. And when you are through, stop at the desk. We'll show you where I am. Well, I... <laughs> well, I, I... Yes, Mr. Diamond. What is your fee? Oh, thank you. Believe me. A hundred a day in expenses. And uh, your retainer? One day's work. Mr. Diamond, can you help our boy? Uh, Mrs. Carter, I, I don't really know. No, I'll write you a check. Oh, thanks, thanks. Mrs. Carter, uh, whatever it is that's strong enough to make your son jump his, uh, uh, lose his memory, it might you be... You think maybe it's something bad? I know it's something bad. How bad? I, I've got to find out. I hope it's not uh, more serious than I think. Oh, yes, I know. Here you are, Mr. Diamond. Oh, thanks. I'll keep in touch. <laughs> I left the Carters with that lousy feeling in my stomach. I looked at the check. Two hundred bucks. For what? Maybe a down payment on a man's sanity. Maybe not. William Carter could have done a lot of things that missing night. Maybe that two hundred bucks was going to be a mortgage on murder. I went down to the desk and an intern showed me downstairs to a small room with one desk lamp in the corner. I'm glad you didn't take too long. The patient will be down in a minute. Oh, uh, isn't this a little irregular, Doctor? I mean, uh, uh, oh, me listening in on a man's secrets? If he's done something against the law, I want you to find out whether it really happened. Well, if he tells you about it, it must have happened. He might have thought it happened. I can't take the chance. If he's committed some sort of a crime, I don't think I'll be able to do much for him. Now, I want you to sit behind that screen there and be perfectly quiet. Sure. Oh, yes, yes. The needle can't reach this far. Uh, this uh, should be quite interesting for you, Diamond, particularly in your kind of work. Uh, you can find out about uh, anything you want with this stuff, can't you, Doctor? If it's a recent shock, why? Oh, I was just thinking about a little blonde I know. Now, here he is. Uh, Roll him right uh, over here. Uh, uh, now, lift him over on the bed. Uh, oh. It's all right, William. Uh, Everything is going fine. All right, oh. thank you, nurse. How do you feel, William? Uh, Can you understand me? Uh, say it again. Say it again. Can you understand me, William? Yes. Yes, yes, but keep talking. Say anything. Just, just make my mind stop jumping around. Sure. Uh, it's nice in this hospital, isn't it? Huh? It's nice in this hospital. Yeah. Oh, what's the matter with me? Just be quiet. Think about lying in a boat under the warm sun. Uh, lying in a boat. Lying in a boat. Lying in a boat. Uh-huh. Just lying in the sun, rocking back and forth. What are you going to do? This won't hurt. You're going to have a nice, long sleep. Oh, yeah, please, please. I want to sleep. There. Now start counting. Do what? Do what? Tell me again. Start counting. One. One. Two. Two. You're doing fine. Keep counting. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine. I sat behind the screen and listened to the doctor begin. At the start, Carter seemed almost glad to talk about it. He described the beginning of the evening. He had a date. A girl named Helena on 53 East 51st Street. Did you have a good time with Helena? Wonderful time. 
We went dancing. Where did you He go kept dancing? talking all about the evening. Uh, they danced and drank. We went to a little the dancing. doctor kept digging, working at it, looking for every little detail. After you got through dancing? We went to her apartment. We uh, had some more drinks. Pretty strong ones. Who made them? What? Who made the drinks? Helena did. Then he came in. Who came in? He did. The man. The man? The man just came into Helena's apartment. Who are you? Helena, who is this guy? What are you doing here, William? What are you doing? What do you want? Get out. Get out. I don't care who you are. I'm not going to get out, William. I don't believe it. You're not her husband. Stop it. Take your hands off her. He's hurting Helena. Yeah. I'll fix you. Helena needs help. There. Yeah. You hit him. Yeah. Get, gotta get out of here. Why do you? I gotta... I gotta get out. He's dead. I killed him. <laughs> Well, Diamond, did you hear enough? Yeah. It's up to you. Find out if he really did it. Okay. Thank you. For what? Well, according to William Carter, he'd gone to a girl's apartment, the husband had come in, and he'd killed him. Cases like that don't make me a happy gumshoe, but I had a $200 retainer in my pocket, so I had to keep going. My first stop was the 5th Precinct Police Station and Lieutenant Walt Levinson. When I walked into the squad room, I spotted Sergeant Otis tying a square knot in his shoelace. I'll be right with you, gumshoe. Hey, Otis, what happens when you break one of those shoelaces? Oh, what do you think happens? I get a new one. For those shoes? What do you use, the mooring line for the Queen Mary? Oh, uh, why don't you lay off? I thought we was pals. Is the lieutenant in? Yeah, go ahead. Hey, Otis, if your shoes wear out, why don't you do like the Dutch do? Oh, what's that? Wear wooden ones. Just go out and rent yourself a couple of rowboats. Oh. Hello, Walt. Good evening, Mr. Diamond, and thank you for stopping by so late. Well, now, what do you mean? You've got some horrible scheme up your sleeve, but I don't have to play straight, man. I'm off duty in exactly three minutes. It'll take two. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I want a list of DOAs for the night of November 12th. What's the matter? Can't you find a little old corpse all by your lonesome? Oh, shut uh, up. Does the police department have to furnish you with one? Well, if you just cooperate, sassy, you'll be out of here in two minutes. Here. Now, oh, thanks. Wow. Hmm, three of them, huh? If that's what it says, why, is the one we haven't found? Two women and a man. Yeah. The man's my department, homicide. Mm. Herbert Fisher, found in his wife's apartment on 51st Street, married to Helena Fisher. Hmm, what about Helena, Walt? We're still looking for her. Neighbors say she and her husband hadn't been living together for several months. The old boy must have come home, found her with another guy, and got heated up. Either the wife or the other guy killed him. Huh? How do you know there was another guy? Well, the neighbors say a young guy started seeing her about a week before. Came up with her that night. We haven't a line on him yet, but we're checking. What killed him? Poker from the fireplace, beaten over the head. Oh, no prints. Nope, clean as a whistle. Say, what's with you? What are you so interested in this killing for? Oh, I just like to hear about crimes. Oh, now stop that. If you know something... I do know something, Walt. Yeah, what? One word. Will it help me solve this case? I don't know. Well, what is it? Bye. I left the precinct and headed back to Bellevue and Dr. Gerson. I had a hunch that was growing roots, and if William Carter's sanity was going to be saved, it would have to be done in a hurry. Up till now, only four people knew who was in that apartment when Fisher was killed. Myself, a missing girl named Helena, the potential killer, William Carter, and the good doctor. The girl hasn't gone to the police? Why, if William Carter did it? Well, that's what I've been asking myself all the way down here, Doctor. Unless she wants to protect him. That's the only one I could come up with. I want to ask you two questions, Doctor. First, do you think William Carter would pick up a poker and beat a man on the head? That's hard to say. He might. Would he then wipe his fingerprints off? According to what he told me, he killed the man and rushed immediately from the apartment. I'd say no to the fingerprints. Mm, that's what I'd say. He suffered the shock immediately after he killed the man. He knew he had to get out, but after that, he can't remember a thing. May I use your phone? Certainly. Doctor, how could Carter be sure that he'd killed the man? Why, I don't know. If you remember, he didn't say. 
He just said he'd killed him. Homicide, Lieutenant Levinson. I thought you were going home. I got to sit up with a headache. Oh, well, I want some information. Where did the murdered man live if he wasn't staying with his wife? Oh, now, wait a minute. We know who did it. Hmm? You do? Sure. Some guy named Carter, William Carter. I sent some of the boys over to his house ten minutes ago. Now, how do you know he did it? Because Helena Fisher walked into the station and told us so. You got the girl? Yeah, we're holding her till we pick up the Carter guy. Seems Carter was in her apartment with her. Uh, I know the story. You do? You do? I'll be right down. Well, they've got Helena, Doctor. She says William Carter killed her husband. Yes, I heard. Well, I'm afraid I can't do much for him now. I think you can. There's one thing that smells too rotten to make sense. Why did William Carter take enough time to wipe off those fingerprints? Because he didn't want to be discovered. Well, if he didn't want anyone to know he did it, why didn't he kill the girl? Oh, good Lord, I never thought of that. I got an idea. And it may mean you bending the law a little, Doctor, but it might save William Carter. What do you want me to do, Mr. Diamond? Is there any way you can find out from Carter exactly what he did after he struck the man? Of course. When he comes out of his sleep, he'll be able to talk about it. Can he be moved? Well, yes, if it's necessary. Then get him out of here. Take him somewhere. Even if his family covers for him, it's just a matter of time until Lieutenant Levinson finds out he was picked up and put in here. Well, this is extremely dangerous. Look, if he believes he killed this guy, the girl's story will hold water. The only way that I can see to make him snap out of it is to prove to him that he really didn't kill anybody. That's right. Uh, don't you think he did kill that man? Uh, maybe, but I doubt it. Can he walk? Yes. Good. Take him down to my office. Here's the key. Stay there until you hear from me. You know, I, I like you, Diamond, and I respect you, but this is... You want to save the boy's life? Of course. Then get him down to my office. <laughs> left the hospital and grabbed a cab back to the 5th precinct. Sometimes when things don't add up like ABC, you've got to go out into left field for the answer. Everything pointed to William Carter and he believed it himself, but I kept thinking about those fingerprints. I told Walt my idea. Are you crazy? So the guy did wipe off the prints but didn't kill the girl. What of it? People do crazy things the first time they knock somebody off. Besides, you can't go around posing as a police sergeant. Oh, now stop that, Walt. Admit it. There's a hole someplace. But you told me yourself the Carter guy admits killing the girl's husband. In his condition, he'd admit anything. He says he did it. The girl says he did it. What more do you want? I don't want any doubts at all. Will you just try the idea? If you'll tell me where you've got William Carter. Promise not to have the boys there? Just you? Yes, yes, I get me. He's up in my it. office. Wouldn't you know it? Okay, Walt. Get the girl in here and tell her just what I told you. I don't need any rehearsals. Otis. Yeah, Lieutenant. Send Mrs. Fisher in here. Right. I hope you know what you're doing. You're putting me in an awful spot. Well, if it works, Walt, the state won't burn an innocent man. Yes, but this... Uh, Mrs. Fisher, Lieutenant. Oh, come in, Mrs. Fisher. Thank you, Lieutenant. Sit down. This is Sergeant Diamond. Oh. Well, how, how do you do, Sergeant Diamond? Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Fisher? We've checked your story and everything seems to be all right. You can go home, but please don't leave town. Ah. Uh. I'm terribly sorry about this. I, I know I should have told you sooner, but William was... Well, I, I didn't know what to do. You did the right thing. Have you found William yet? No, but we will. Well, didn't you check his house? Isn't he with his family? No, he didn't come home at all. Oh, and that reminds me. You know, you're the only witness who can prove he did kill your husband. Oh, why, yes, I guess I am. Well, I'd be extremely careful. He just might, uh... Lieutenant... You don't think he might try and, and kill me, too? Well, you never know. After a man kills once and he's got time to think about it, he's liable to do anything. Well, then, I, I demand police protection. And you'll get it. Sergeant Diamond here has been assigned to the case. Oh, how nice. I'll do as much as I possibly can. Well, when do you start? Right now. I'll meet you out in the squad room right after I have a few words with the lieutenant. All right, Sergeant. Uh, thank you, Lieutenant. Perfectly all right. This is ridiculous. All right, all right. You get over to my office and pick up William Carter and the doctor. I'll stall Mrs. Fisher. Take her to a bar or something. All right. But if the commission hears about this, Sergeant Otis will be the new head of homicide. Nice, Sergeant Diamond. Do you always guard people like this? Just the pretty ones. Oh, thank you. If you really think William might try to harm me, you'll have to stick pretty close, won't you? Mm-hmm. Do you mind? Not at all. 
What time is it? Uh, 11.30. Getting tired? Yes, a little. It, it's been a hard day. I'll bet it has. What if William comes to my place in the middle of the night? Where will you be? Watching the front door, baby. He won't get in. Watching the door from inside or outside? Outside, baby. Sorry. Uh, yes, so am I. <laughs> Here's my apartment, Rick. Well, nice place. I don't like it very much since... Look, couldn't I stay in a hotel? Oh, no. Too many ways for a killer to get in. But do you really think William might try and, and get me? What's he hiding out for? Well, he, he could be scared. All the more reason. Men like that don't hide out for a week if they're going to give themselves up. And if William isn't going to give himself up, he'll probably try to get rid of the one person who knows he did the killing. But William isn't like that. He wouldn't... Uh, wouldn't what? I was just going to say he wouldn't kill anybody. But he did. He knows he did. Yes. Well, I'm going out in front and check the building. I'll, I'll be back. Oh, do you have to go? That's a good idea. You just take it easy. But, but, but William has a key. Oh, well, then you better give me one, too. I'll be right out in front. Oh, all right, here. Uh, don't be too long, Rick. I can't stand this place long if I'm alone. Sure, baby. Yeah, yeah, I spotted you when you drove up. Hello, doctor. I hope your plan works, Diamond. Yeah. Oh, uh, hello, William. He can't hear you. I put him into a deep sleep. He'll only answer my voice. There's only one way that we can get him into that apartment. Well, let's go. This is Fisher's scared step. William? Yes? Get out of the car. Uh, come on, Walter. You've got to be there to hear it. We solved this one. I'll never tell anyone how. Let's go. Come with me, William. Now, William, remember, you are to go up to Helena's apartment and go in. Uh, here's a key, Doctor. Do you understand, William? I am to go up to Helena's apartment and go in. Here's the key. Use the key to let yourself in. The key to let myself in. When you're in, close the door and stand in front of it. And that's all. All right, Mr. Diamond. Here we go. Four of us went in through the front door and Dr. Gerson briefed William once more. Then we led him up the stairs and up to Helena Fisher's apartment. I could hear her humming as soon as William tried the key. We all ducked. What? Who's there? Rick? Answer me, who's there? <gasps> William! What do you want? William, what are you doing here? William, say something. Don't just stand there. Oh, you, you, you've got to get out. The police are looking for you. There's one downstairs right now. Well, say something. Stop staring. William, get away from that door. Please, William, please, please. I, I know what you want, William. I, I won't tell anyone. William, say something! Don't look at me like that! You, you're going to kill me, aren't you? Look, William, you didn't do it. I killed him. I just told you he was dead after you hit him. When you left, I killed him with a poker. William, please! All right, Alina. Oh, Greg, Greg. Oh, he was going to kill me. Oh, sure. Like he killed your husband. Yes, yes. How's William, Doctor? I'll wake him up when he gets back to the hospital. He'll be all right when he reads Mrs. Fisher's confession. Rick? What's going on here? You better go along with the lieutenant, baby. Why? We heard your whole confession from outside the door. What? Why, I, I, I just said he was going to kill me. Also, we found some of your fingerprints on the poker. You're crazy. I wiped them all. <gasps> uh, she's all yours, Walt. Let's go, Mrs. Fisher. You tricked me. You tricked me into saying that. Come on, lady. I don't want to get rough. I'll kill you, too. I'll... I'll... <sighs> I think you can take her along now, Lieutenant. <laughs> Holy cow. Why, doctor. Well, I've never hit a woman before, but 
This one made me very unhappy. Well, you're a good doctor, uh, doctor, but you're certainly no gentleman. You should have kicked her. Kept you out so late. It's after midnight. Oh, I'd stick around and watch Otis turn into a pumpkin. Now that's Cinderella. Yeah. Can you imagine Sergeant Otis as Cinderella? The good prince would slip his sacrum trying to haul his slipper around. Tell me a fairy story, Rick. Well, once upon a time, there were two idiots. Rick. And they lived happily ever after. Sing. Don't like it? Sing. I liked it. Sing. I'll do as I please. Rick. I love those dear hearts and gentle people who live in my hometown. Because those dear hearts and gentle people will never ever let you down. They read the good book from Friday till Monday. That's how the weekend goes. I've got a dream house I'll build there one day With picket fence and rambling rows I feel so welcome Each time that I return That my happy little heart Keeps laughing like a clown I love the dear hearts And gentle people Who live and love in my hometown well, how was that, honey? Well, Harold Applenocker, where'd you pick up that there song? Well, my hometown, Mountain View, back up in the hills of Arkansas. Oh, well, that sure was mighty fine. Well, Lula Bell, I'm glad you liked it. Mind if I bust you up with another eight bar? Nope. Bust away. I love the dear heart and gentle people who live and love in my hometown. Well, well, well. Yeah, I think I did pretty fine that air strong. Oh, yes, sir. You done busted me up right proper. Oh, you ought to come over to Mountain View sometime, little Bell. Got dear hearts and gentle people all over the place. Oh, I'd like to make the trip. Oh, you'd love the people. You'd love to see them, love to greet them. How would you greet them, Lula Bell? How would you greet them? What would you say? Howdy! Oh, they love you, Lula Bell. You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Joan Banks, Sam Edwards, and Norman Field. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written and directed by Blake Edwards. Dick Powell soon will be seen in the screen version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. Now, this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. What's on NBC Sunday? There's a full evening of great entertainment in store for you tomorrow on NBC. You'll hear rib-tickling comedy on the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. And for mystery, there's Sam Spade's latest caper. Tomorrow, Sam meets a Mr. Tom Turkey. For the very best radio fare, always tune to NBC.